This is Cerebral Cinema. Movies of the Mind. Yeah. Okay, watch this one. <laughs> Well, it looks like you're getting lucky, Steve. I've got your strike for you. Yes, I'm going to add another to that and beat you by 40 points, Oliver. Yes, but you 40 think. points. Wait and see. Now, wait. And before you throw your next ball, I'd like you to know that if this wasn't a bowling league, I wouldn't be seen in the same alley with you. <laughs> you're still sore about that order I took away, aren't you? Yes. I'll be quiet while I throw this one down the alley. Uh huh. Well. All of them went down. That's my second strike in a row. Yes, I know. And hey, where are you going? Over to sit down next to Mr. Smith. Well, move over, please, Mr. Smith. Tired? Yes, I am. Maybe you can have a nice long rest here for permanent one. Oliver, how you talk? You think I'm kidding, huh? If Mrs. Smith wasn't here, I'd tell you exactly what I think. Don't let me stop you, Mr. Oliver. Huh? Oliver is poor because I got a double strike. That's oh. not what I'm angry about, C.F., and you know it. And I'm going to do something about it. Oh, oh, what's that? A threat? That's a promise, C.F., and I hope you've made out your will. I won't forget that you swindled me out of the biggest contract I was ever offered. And in 24 hours, you're going to be dead. <laughs> And now, on to Dick Calmer as Boston Blackie. Enemy to those who make him an enemy. Friend to those who have no friends. Mr. Smith will be home for dinner tomorrow night, Martha, so I think you ought to have a roast. Yes, Mrs. Smith. I'll go phone the butcher right now. You never know these days. Oh, shall I answer that, ma'am? Please, Martha. Yes, ma'am. Is Mr. Smith in the living room? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, getting ready to go out. Oh, in that case, Martha, if that phone call is for me, I'm not in. I understand. Good. Henry! Hello? Henry, where are you? In here, dear. Have you seen my blue top coat? Now, let me see. If I were a blue top coat, where would I be? Hmm. In the closet. That's it. I'd be in the closet. Now, let's see how good a blue top coat I am. Here, they are. <laughs> what would I ever do without you? Well, for one thing, tonight you'd be awfully chilly without this coat. Here, I'll help down with it. All right. Thank you. Anything you want before I go, Evelyn? No, dear. All I ask is that you win and come home early. Honey, a winner always comes home early. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what did you think of C.F. Baker when you met him at the bowling alley last night? Mm, he's all right, I guess. I didn't pay too much attention. Oh. Pretty good bowler, though. He beat that Mr. Oliver pretty badly. <laughs> Oliver and C.F. have been rivals in everything since I've known them. Mr. Oliver sounded pretty serious when he threatened your friend Baker, dear. Oh, he didn't mean it. Oh, no? No. You wouldn't say that if you saw his face. Fine, I'll walk you to the door. All right. What do you say a man could have? Handsomest man a gal could escort. <laughs> Let's cut it out or nobody will believe we've been married ten years. Good night, dear. Good night. Don't be too late. Now, wait up for... Oh, Henry. Oh, what's the matter? Henry, that's not our car in front of the door. No, no, it's CF, honey. We swapped cars at noon. He had to make a trip out to the country with a load of stuff, and his car was too small. Honey, I don't like the idea of your driving CF's car. Well, why not? It'll get me to his house, and I'll drive ours back home. Forget it, dear. You're the wearingest wife I ever had. I'm the only wife you ever had. I'm still not wrong, am I? <laughs> so long, Ev. I'll be back as early as I can. That's only half of your promise. All right, I promise to win, too. That's my fellow who said that. So long, sweetheart. Bye. See you, Sit down, Mrs. Smith, and answer a few simple questions, if you can. I don't know anything, except that Henry's dead. I know it's difficult for you to talk about it, Mrs. Smith, but I need your help. I want to know the reason for the explosion in your husband's car. Oh, but it wasn't Henry's car. It belonged to C.F. Baker. C.F. Baker, huh? A friend of Henry. I see. Well, Mr. Smith, I... Inspector Farrell. Oh, get out of here, Matthews. Can't you see I'm busy? Yes, Inspector Then get out of here. I'm working on the Smith killing. All right, Mr. Smith. Your husband was killed by a bomb wired to the ignition of Baker's car. Inspector could... Faraday, about Will you get that... out of here, Matthews? I'm busy. Yes, sir, but about that bomb, sir, we've discovered the make of it. Huh? What have you been trying to do? Keep it a secret? No, sir, I've been trying to tell you. Well, next time, try louder. Oh, no, Inspector. 
Who made the bomb? The Oliver Munitions Company. Inspector, that's the company owned by the man who threatened to kill Mr. Baker. Then Oliver's the man we want. He killed your husband. He hated him for some reason. Well, and... Inspector, he didn't even know my husband. And I didn't meet Mr. Oliver myself until last night. Oh, fine. A guy doesn't kill a man he doesn't know, does he, Inspector? No, he doesn't. But, Inspector, Mr. Oliver threatened to kill Mr. Baker. And Henry was using Mr. Baker's car. That's right. You told me that. Well, this is an open and shut case, then. I'll go to see Oliver. Grab him. This case will be over before Boston Blackie even knows it started. I'm sorry, Inspector Faraday, but Mr. Oliver has someone in his office at the moment. Yeah? You'll have to wait. Okay, miss. How long do you think you've been? Well, I don't know, sir, but I'm sure it won't be too long. Uh, won't you have a seat? No, thanks. Don't stand. Uh, there are magazines on the table over there. No, thanks. I read them all. Four months ago. <laughs> <laughs> Oliver always keep you when he works after hours? Oh, when it's important. And this is important. He's been with this man and woman for over an hour already. Oh, he has two people with him, does he? Hmm. It'd be just my luck that they were Boston Blackie and Mary Wesley. <laughs> well, as a matter of fact, that's exactly who's in there. Yeah, that's what I... Blackie! Oh, no. Oh, yes. But I'm not waiting out here while Blackie's in there. Oh, Mr. Faraday, you can't go in there. Mr. Oliver didn't come. Yeah, well, I'm in conference with him. Why, hello, Faraday, old pal. Don't old pal me, Blackie. What I want to know is what... What you always want to know, what am I doing here? And uh, you want to know what I'm doing here, too, don't you? I know what you're doing here, Miss Wesley. Watching Blackie interfere in another of my cases. Oh, she doesn't watch, Inspector. She applauds when I solve them for you. Oh, Oh, by the way, this is Bill Oliver, the man you came here to accuse of murdering Henry Smith. Hello, Inspector. I've been expecting you. I know why, too. You killed Smith. Meaning to kill C.F. Baker, the man you threatened at the bowling alley last night. I know all about you, Oliver. You're coming to headquarters with me. Hey, well, if you say so, and You're not going anywhere, Oliver. Not if you've been telling me the truth. Well, Blackie, it sounded like the truth to me. Quiet, Miss Wesley. Oh. All right, Blackie, what's he been telling you? Everything he called me here to tell me. Yeah? That he foolishly threatened to kill C.F. Baker. And he knows it looks bad for him because a bomb was put in Baker's car, which Baker had loaned to Henry Smith. Especially bad, since Mr. Oliver is a munitions man. I said quiet, Miss Wesley. Well, I, I said that quiet. Quiet! And uh, I suppose, Inspector, you're going to tell me it was one of my bombs that killed Henry Smith. I will tell you that. We checked it, and it was. Well, Oliver doesn't make all his bombs just for himself, are they? Huh? They can be bought. And if brains could be bought, you'd have enough to know that Oliver wouldn't have threatened Baker in public if he intended to kill him. And he certainly wouldn't kill him with one Look, if you don't... Keep... All right, Inspector. I'll be quiet. Yeah, you better. Excuse me. Yes? Mr. Oliver, Paul Williams is out here to see you. He says it's important. Yeah, have him wait for me in the consultation room, Louise. I'll see him in a minute, if I can. Yes, sir. Uh, well, uh, where were we? Uh, Faraday was about to drag you down to headquarters, but I think I'll be able to change his mind about that. No, I'm not taking you to headquarters, Oliver. But don't leave Tom. I may want to see you later. You know where to reach me if you do. Is this all for now? I think it is, Oliver. But if I find out that you've been lying to me, that's all for you. Hello, Paul. Sorry, get the wing. That's okay, Mr. Oliver. You heard about the bomb in C.F. Carl, I guess. Yes, in fact, the police were just here to see me. But I had Boston Blackie on my side before the cops got to me. Yeah, well, uh... I said I'd give you a thousand for killing Baker and gave you five hundred in advance. So here's the rest of what I owe you. Oh. Thanks, Mr. Oliver, but uh, the bomb killed the wrong guy. I know that. The bomb idea wasn't very smart, Paul, but I promised you a thousand for the job, and I keep my promises. Well, I'm sure glad you do. What about Baker? You still want him killed? Yes, I want him killed, but later... After Boston Blackie's made a chump out of himself, making an innocent man out of me. Mrs. Smith, was there anyone else here in your home besides you when that bomb killed your husband? Only my maid, Matthew, and she was answering the phone at the time. Who was calling? No one. It was the wrong number. I see. Now, Mrs. Smith, you heard Oliver threaten Baker's life? Yes, I did, but we all laughed about it. Who's we? Well, Mr. Baker and all the other bowling team members who were there. I don't know any of them well. I don't even know all their names. Well, how did you happen to be at the bowling match? I went for my husband. He and Mr. Baker were rather good friends, and Henry asked me to go as a sort of rooting section. Your husband and Baker were good friends. Now, what did Baker's initial CF stand for? I haven't any idea. I knew Mr. Baker only slightly. Uh huh. Well, uh, Miss Smith, how well did you know your husband? Why, I... Well, I mean, uh, 
Do you know any reason at all why someone would want to kill him? Henry had no enemies, Blackie, and all his friends were good ones. No one I know would want to kill him. Do you think your husband was killed by mistake, Henry? Yes. I think Mr. Oliver was trying to kill Mr. Baker. Henry made the mistake of taking C.F. car. I'm beginning to think that's the answer to this, too. Well, thanks, Mr. Smith. I'll be seeing you later. And if you hear anything new or remember anything, let me know, will you? Yes, Blackie. Goodbye. Goodbye. Yes, Baker, please. Speaking. Oh, darling, this is Evelyn. Hello, sweetheart. How are you, sweetie? Fine. And you? Wonderful. Oh, I'm so glad. Oh, darling, it's all worked out so much better than we ever dreamed it would, hasn't it? Yes. What a wonderful accident, that explosion was. You can say that again. Oh, I'm so happy about it. Yes, so rich, too. Wasn't your husband worth a hundred thousand? Dead. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you won't stop loving me because I'm rich, will you? Why not? Wouldn't look right. Henry was killed accidentally by that bomb in my car. Let's not give the police anything to think about. I guess you're right. But we won't have to wait too long, will we? Better be a weeping widow, a respectable length of time. A weeping widow, did you say? Mm. All right, darling. But don't forget that when the accident is forgotten, I want to be your laughing bride. <laughs> Now, back to Boston Blackie. Munitions maker Bill Oliver threatens to kill a man named C.F. Baker. The following night, Henry Smith, in a car borrowed from Baker, is killed when a bomb destroys the automobile. Later, Oliver pays his henchman, Paul Williams, $1,000 for doing the job. The dead man's wife tells Blackie she knows the intended victim, Baker, only slightly. But we later learn that Baker and Mrs. Smith intend to be married. Blackie and Inspector Faraday do not know this, however. As we return to our story, Baker is in the bowling alley where the original threat on his life was made. Doing some practicing, right, Mr. Baker? Oh, yes, Joe. Only it's not doing me any good. I'm a little off my game. Well, keep at it, Mr. Baker. That's the way to get better. Well, I'll try. Oh, good. Not bad, Mr. Baker. Not bad. Huh? Oh, who are you? My name's Williams, C.F. Paul Williams. I got to talk to you. You see, I'm practically unemployed at the moment. What's the meaning of this? Well, you see, when I work, I'm hired to work over certain guys by certain other guys who don't like them, understand? No, not at all. Look, see, uh, let me give it easy. Suppose a guy wanted you out of the way. He could hire me to do the job. And I'd take the job unless... Unless what? Unless the guy who was supposed to be knocked off paid me more, like you're going to do. In other words, Oliver sent you to kill me, huh? I didn't say that. All I said was I was for hire. I could be for hire by somebody who wants you knocked off. Or I could be hired by you. As a kind of life insurance. Sit down, sit down, will you, Faraday? It's bad enough you're running around in circles on this case. Stop wearing out the rug in your office. Uh, I'd like to wear you out, Blackie. Sorry, replacement parts for Blackie are very hard to get. Now, sit down, will you? You're making me nervous. I think better when I walk around. You what better? I... Inspector, you don't even walk straight, much less think straight. Now, listen to me a minute, will you? Okay. Which only goes to prove how silly I'm getting. This case has you puzzled because a fellow named Smith was killed and your prize suspect, Oliver, the munitions maker, didn't even know him, right? That doesn't puzzle me. So Smith was killed by mistake, that's all. It's your theory that, that uh, Oliver threatened C.F. Baker, planted a bomb in Baker's car, but Smith was using the car and he got it. What's wrong with that? Nothing except for the fact that you thought of it. Uh-huh. Well, why don't you arrest Oliver if you're so sure? What proof have I got? You have a little, little thing like that stuff? Oh, Blackie, please. Please beat it so I can figure this out for myself. Don't make me throw you out. Uh, kid, this office is public property. Mm-hmm. And I'm a member of the public. Yeah? And you're a public servant. So? So, go get me a glass of water. Oh, Blackie, I... I'm sorry. Like, I was only kidding. Very amusing. You're the best cop on the force, but I really do have to rip you once in a while, just to keep in practice. <laughs> now, uh... uh I... <laughs> let me tell you what I think about the case, will you? Oh, go ahead. I think that somebody might have wanted Smith dead. Now... What we have to do is to find out who that somebody is. 
And how's that done, genius? I'll let you know sometime this evening right now. I've got to go get Mary and take her out to dinner. After that, I'll try to blast out the guy who exploded the bomb in that car. <laughs> You sure he said his name was Baker, Mary? Mm-hmm. C.S. Baker, Blackie. He called and said his life was threatened and for you to come right over. Well, I told him you were out and you'd be over as soon as you could. You know, I know that name. Who is he, Blackie? Uh, he's the fellow that Oliver, the munitions man, threatened. That's all I know about him. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember. Well, what do the initials stand for? Who knows? Everybody refers to him just as C.S. Anyhow, this is his building, and we're in for a couple of hectic moments, if I'm not mistaken. You'd better wait out here. No, oh, what a chance. Well... All right. But if there's trouble, keep back. Come on. Okay. Hey, you think the man who threatened CF might be there now? I don't know. But if Baker sounded as urgent as you say, it's what? Maybe the killer got there before us. Now, that's a nice place. Well, it's more pleasant than if he were there when we got in. You got something there. Yeah. Let's see now. One, one, A. One, A. That ought to be right off the door here. Mm Mm-hmm. I'll have my gun handy just in case. This um, hall can be emptied in three seconds flat by me if there's a killer in that apartment. We'll find out right now. If you hear a strange noise, Blackie, don't pay any attention to it. My knee is knocking. Quiet knockies. Mm-hmm. Yes? Uh, hello. Uh, I'm Boston Blackie. This is Mary Wesley. You're C.F. Baker? Yes, I am. What can I do for you? What can you do for me? Well, you called me, didn't you? You said you wanted help? You spoke to Miss Wesley here. Yeah, you told me your life had been threatened. Well, there must be something wrong, Blackie. I never called anybody about that. As a matter of fact, the only time my life was threatened was yesterday. And I think the police know that a man named Oliver threatened me. You didn't phone me? No. I'm sorry. Good night. Well, uh, come on, Blackie. Oh, I'm sure somebody has a strange sense of humor. No doubt. If I ever get the guy, I'll... <laughs> Good work, C.F. You get rid of Blackie very nicely. He's very smart. Because if you hadn't, I'd have killed you right here. You never should have called Blackie, you know. Now, look, Williams, we're supposed to be making a business deal to stop talking about killing. Why? Killing is my business. You know, Oliver paid me a thousand dollars to put that bomb in your car. The one that killed Smith, and you did it. Now, look, Williams, I tell you that... Well, it was pretty. Like I told you that I was in your... Yes, I know what you told me, but it sounded phony, and I came back to find out a few things. And I heard enough from this character here... Right, that murder is my business, huh, Blackie? Well, pushing guys around is my sideline. I'm going to give you a free sample. That's the best you've got. I'm not buying. Try this. The side. Hey, wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait, wait, my, my, yeah. my table, my lamp. Stop it now, will you? Stop it, please. Stop it, thanks. Okay, see yep. Right after I stop him. That does it. Now, I'll call him down to Faraday and get him to sing the same song to the police that he did to you. So I'll have hire him to gimmick up your car with a bomb, huh? And I loaned my car to Smith, and that's the story, Blackie. Yes, I know. Oh, well, there's a first time for everything. So it looks like for once, Faraday was right. Yeah, Blackie, thanks for dropping that sock Paul Williams in my lap. That cracks this case wide open. As soon as he admits rigging that bomb, I'll have Oliver down here, too. I heard him tell C.F. Baker he was hired by Oliver to put the bomb in Baker's car. He admits he said that, Blackie, Mm -hmm. but uh, he said he didn't do it. He said he was paid to do it. But uh, didn't. Oh. Oh, he's lying, of course. I'll get it out of him. Don't worry. What if he's telling the truth? Must you always think of unpleasant things? No. He did it all right. We got the motive. Oliver wanted Baker dead, and we know the connection between Williams and Oliver. Well, in that case, Mary's on a wasted errand. What's Miss Wesley doing? She's pretending to be a household servant at the moment, Inspector. A household? Because I still think this case needs a lot of cleaning up. <laughs> Let's go in his arm. Oh, it sure was nice talking to you, Martha. Well, same here. I guess I'm going to like my new job working for those people down the block. Well, anything you want to know, dearie, you ask me. Just you come to meet me. <laughs> Thank you, I will. I don't know how long I'll stay with these people. Up. Mm, parties every night. Oh, such goings on. But well, one good thing about the Smiths, never no parties. Mm-hmm. Of course, Mrs. Smith had a boyfriend on the side that her husband, oh, may he rest in peace, never knew about. <laughs> a boyfriend? And how... Did you ever see him? Oh, no. He used to call up during the day, though, when he knew Mr. Smith wouldn't be home. How did he answer the phone? Oh, what kind of a voice did he have? Well, he was a cunning one, dearie. He used to disguise it all the time. <laughs> and was he disappointed when I used to know it was him every time, though? Well, Boston Blackie would be disappointed that you don't know who he is. Hello? 
Now, look, she asked. Yes? I'm kind of glad Boston Blackie brought me over here to your apartment. I want to apologize for threatening you at the bowling alley the other night. It's a little late, isn't it, Oliver? Well, all right. Now, look, if you want to... Stop it, both of you. Come on. Shut up. Uh, Didn't get you together to start a battle. Now, both of you lie out there in the fort. What? What are you talking about? You crazy, Blackie. I don't want to fool around, kid. You'd better lie on the floor the easy way without help from my fists. Well, uh, she has... Uh, I don't know what this is about, but I'm lying on the floor. There you are. Okay, that's good enough for me. That's being smart, boys. In exactly 30 seconds, my girlfriend is bringing me a visitor here. And I wanted to walk in and see you both on the floor. Something tells me this is a gag. Better tell us something it doesn't know what it's talking about. Now, keep quiet. I'm putting out all these lights except the lamp. So all that can be seen from the door is your bodies. What are you looking for, Blackie? A motive for murder, C.F. The solution of the mystery of why a man was killed. Go right in, please, Mrs. Smith. All right, but I... Charlie! Charlie, what's that? Nothing, Nothing at all, except you just told me why your husband was killed and who killed him. Now, Faraday, let's not make jokes, and I'll tell you why I knew that C.F. Baker killed Smith. He's telling me not to make jokes. Blackie, I never make jokes. Yeah, I know, but the strain of your trying is very disconcerting. Ah, uh-huh. ha. Now, listen. From the beginning, I didn't believe that Smith was killed by mistake. Somebody wanted him dead. Somebody got what he wanted, too. Right. It's true that Oliver paid Paul Williams to kill C.F. Baker, but Williams was a phony and never did the job. Then when Smith was killed to make his car, he collected his fee, claiming that he had put the bomb in the car, and he wasn't responsible for the fact that Baker wasn't in it. Now, get to the point. Why did Mr. Smith have to die? Mary found out for me that Mrs. Smith had a mysterious boyfriend. Well, I imagined her boyfriend wanted the husband out of the way. But who was this boyfriend? I didn't know, but I thought it might be either Baker or Oliver. So you set up that little scene in Baker's apartment. That's right. I knew that Mrs. Smith would go to whichever one of the men lying on the floor was her secret friend. Yeah. That's not a new device at all. But without moving from the door, she gave herself away. How? She yelled, Charlie, Charlie, what's happened? Who knew C.F. Baker's first name was Charlie? Nobody that we knew. Hey, only somebody that was very close to him would know that. So that's how you knew Baker was a boyfriend, huh? You've got your confession. As a matter of fact, he was very cute. When Oliver threatened him, he saw a way of killing Henry Smith and making it look like Oliver had tried to kill him. Well, how do you like that? I don't like it at all. The only thing I like is that Mrs. Smith called C.F. Baker by his first name, which gave me the initial clue. <laughs> Cerebral Cinema hopes you have enjoyed this movie of the mind.